Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to start a new series of tutorials on no input mixer from Igor Vasiliev. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Additionally, if you would like to participate in the giveaway, please do check the instruction contained in the video description. Thank you again. So, let me start saying that no input mixer. It's a, a new fantastic idea from Igor. And um, Igor has a brilliant mind in terms of creating a very unique application. It's practically an emulation of uh, an analog mixing console with the effect racks as well, which has the ability to actually loop the output back into the input, creating some very, very interesting sounds. It's more like an experimental type of, uh, of app. So we are inside the um, AUM. Let's create a Node channel. The first thing to, uh, to notice is that it works as an audio source. So you can search and there it appears, no input. Um, mixer and that uh, is what it looks like quite a busy interface additionally you can also instantiate it as well as um, an insert effect because it has the ability to capture also the input for example from an external source or, or a microphone or audio interface depending on your setup it's a universal app it works on an iphone it works on an ipad it works on a mac as well it, it works on an m1 chip or the silicone chip as well so it supports um, of course a uv3 as you can see uh, running it now it works standalone it supports uh, ableton link it supports uh, audio bus interrupt audio so lot of different compatibility all the different things you expect a normal app to have nowadays in this um, first video it's a getting started we're going to start to get accustomed with the uh, the app itself because it can be quite complex to explain as many apps from eager but um, for me personally actually it makes it more exciting because it's one of those apps which uh, expand your creativity you can spend a lot of time creating sounds and of course you can record those and then you can export them and use other application for example like drumbo or other apps to create uh, even new instruments if you like to do so so is one of those applications as well where subtle changes in the dials create a completely different sounds and it can pick as well very very easily so for this first tutorial this first video we're going to start very uh, slowly uh, nicely and easy so that we understand very much how it works so let's start here from the top left it says factory in it you click on it and you have access to all presets so you have a list here all right which you can select each preset now user interface from uh, ego's application if you click on one preset and they click close you don't set that okay so you need to select one and then click on set and it says preset is applied similar if you want to go back like so press set you can set a favorite you can delete preset rename rename them move them create a new one group them save them export them and set them as you've seen and of course you can close that interface as well you have a back button here which goes up a folder so if you're lost click on factory again now let's exit that if you double click on factory and in it on the name of the preset you have this shortcut which allows you to select a preset like so with a single click which is really nice now as you can see as i'm moving between presets there is no sound at the moment and i can also move to the previous one here with this arrow and also to the next one with this arrow if i keep going eventually i'll have some which will produce sounds And you can see this is picking already here. And if you increase the level here of the output, and you can see 
that as I move to the previous one, there is a no sound. Previous one, again, no sound. And as soon as I go to something that where there is, for example, a drone, you have sound. You can hear here immediately uh, that glitching effect because it can produce things like that. It's quite unique as an app. And of course, you can produce or create factory machines type of sounds, drones, ambient space sounds, uh, uh, feedback type of sounds. You, you can do really a lot. Now, let's go back to that uh, any preset. So we set it like so and we close it and we close. Now, you can save it. Of course, you can go into the app settings. As you can see, you can restore the last state when you load the audio unit. You can display the channel number for the slot. You can go, you activate the alternative interface in the single channel view, which I will explain later on, etc., etc. So you have different options. At the top left here, it says settings up, which is the first tab. Then you can go to MIDI one setting to uh, for uh, controlling via MIDI the app and uh, files is where you have recording, which I will show you in a moment. So let's close again. Next, you have uh, a, um, a a question mark, which um, gives you access to the help. Uh, it's a very exhaustive uh, help with a lot of information. I would say probably typically in the style of eager is more of a reference of an uh, as an help more than just uh, a step-by-step -step guide that is why i do these tutorials so that hopefully will help you you can zoom out zoom in you can go scroll down go to the top and close importantly at the bottom you see also a nice diagram which shows you very much how the app is constructed. And my intention is to create actually a tutorial which go, go through exactly how it works following this diagram, but that is coming. So let's close here. And then you have two buttons here. You have a single and a channel, it says here. Here you're in single mode. What it means is that here on the left hand side, you have channels. You see channel number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And um, you can activate each one of those, like so, right? You can mute them as well, and you see the level here as well for each one of them. And when you click on one, this part of the UI will change, where it says channel here, and then the amp section, the equalizer, the uh, filter, the, um, uh, the EQ filter here section. And then this part here on the right-hand side is um, similar, but is for the output of that mixing console. Now, if I click where it says here, single, I move to a multi-view, and this reminds you, hopefully, of that uh, UI of a mixing console. When you are in multi, of course, you click here on top of the channel where it says channel one level, click on it, and it moves to amp, Okay, click again, you go back to level. If you click here, you can change the input, which can be left, right, pre post, insert effect, mixing left and right, send one and two, return one and two, and none. And you can see controls here, like for send one, send two. Here you have access to EQ, right, or pick, right, and it will change here for with shelf high and low. You have gain, and then the level here for that particular channel. Okay, so hopefully that is, uh, um, mixed, is starting to make sense. And then, of course, here you have a pan left and right channel. If I go back to multi, if I click on multi again, I go back to that uh, uh, single uh, view. If I click where it says channel here, it goes to um, the effect 
uh, section as you can see eight of them and here you can choose for each one of them delay flanger courage tremolo fulment bit crash a glitch this is where you have glitch effect and when you click on one of course the different parameter will change then you can set in on lo-fi high rash you can decide the input none send one send two etc the output could be none it could be a return one and two then you set the level and then uh, you're setting for presence and then here you have the bypass okay um you can also of course you click on effect here on the top you can go back to the channel view if you are a multi view of course you here on the top right it will say it's mixer click on the mixer and you access again that effect view click on multi again it comes out from the effect it goes to mixer click on multi again it goes back to single okay so i appreciated there is a lot to take in but um nevertheless is actually a fantastic um app so let me give you a quick example as a first video so we're going to increase the output um like so right we're going to increase now for channel number one the um the level here and you can see the level is uh, appearing here all right we're going to increase the noise so you start to see output coming out from here Now let's go and set some effects here. For example, let's go for uh, a, um, I don't know, um, a glitch. We set the length, the repeat here. The input, uh, we can set it to none, or we can say send one. The output, we go to return one, and we increase the level. Okay, so we uh, exit the effect. Multi view, increase the send one here. Now we increase the return one here. change the type of noise to a brown now let's activate here and let's say that on channel number two we have uh, return one as an input and we send it back to send one okay increase the level increase this to send two Input, send two, output, return two. Format. Turn two here.
and so on and so forth. So that's an example of uh, um, starting to um, use no input mixer. And as you can see, I have two on two channels active here. You can see the levels here because uh, um, I changed the level here with the slider, so it is represented here as well. Now, of course, you cannot hear um, the audio because I set the output level to zero. Of course, I can add the reverb as well and change the type of reverb. Uh, reverb Ambience, Andromeda, Reverse, Astral, lots you can do. Okay, as you can see, I just introduced now channel three. It's very, very easy to actually make it to pick, really, so you really, really need to be careful with the setting of the dials. But then, this is the beauty of the app. You can create unexpected uh, uh, type of sound, of noise, of, um, you know. So that is why you use this type of um, of apps, particularly from Ego. In my mind, in, in my view, um, I think Igor has a brilliant mind in terms of coming up with an application like this one. So this was just an introductory video. Hopefully you got a bit of the understanding now of how the app works and we continue the journey in the series of tutorials. So as always, see you next time. Bye.